Purify our hearts, Lord. Purify our hearts, Lord. Sanctify our hearts, Lord. Sanctify our hearts, Lord. Cause, oh Lord, we need you. We need to see you. We're desperate for you, God. Father, we need you. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Good afternoon to those of you that are coming in. Good afternoon. Bless you too as well, my brother Devante. Good afternoon, those of you. God bless you. My name is Pastor Cornelius. We are Heaven's Impact. If this is your first time, I want to say welcome. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. I have a word today, and the word today is take care of yourself. Do you hear me today? Good morning. Good morning. Well, good afternoon. Now it's after yes. Well, it's still morning where I'm at. Amen. Listen, praise the Lord. Take care of yourself. And this word that I have for you today is because sometimes we're so busy trying to take care of everybody else that we're forgetting our own needs. And God is like, listen, you got to stop trying to run to the rescue for people that don't want to help themselves. Hallelujah. Good morning. I mean, good morning, those of you. Good morning to you as well, though. Everybody is saying good morning. God bless you. Amen. Can everybody say, I will take care of myself? I want you to declare that today. I will take care of myself. Amen. Because we keep making everybody else our responsibilities. And God is like, listen, let me be God to them. And you do what I've called you to do. I got them. Get out of the way because you're getting in the way of me getting their attention. I want you to declare today, I will take care of myself. Amen. I want you to declare that today. You got to get out of God's way. Amen. Good morning. Well, good afternoon, Mom. Good morning, um, those of you. Some of you, this afternoon where you are. But I want you to declare that today. I will take care of myself. That's right, La Florida. That's right, Miss Rhonda. You're going to take care of yourself. That's right, Miss Roslyn. Come on, let me tell you, people of God, oftentimes we keep trying to help everybody else. And some of the people who we're trying to help don't even want to help themselves. They have no drive. They have no ambition. They have no goals. And you're trying to help them. You tell them, listen, hey, look, there's places hiring. And you're giving them the ways to get, you know, um, to be able to get resources. And they're blatantly ignoring you. And it's like they're looking for someone to be their, you know, their, to be their um, caretaker. Listen, you young. Devontae said, I have to sow today <laughs> to God be the glory, Devontae. Um, the cash app is in my um, it's in the bio on um, TikTok. If you look in the bio, um, it's right there in the top. The cash app in the memo. Devontae, I got to sow today. Listen, let me say this, people of God. The Bible says here, Philippians chapter 4, verse number 19. It says, but my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. What does that mean? God is going to meet your needs, but how can God meet your needs when you're too busy taking the resources that he's giving you for your needs to be met and giving it away to other people? Let me tell you something. I've realized that some people just don't want to help themselves. You can give them all the necessary revenue, the resources, where to go, how to get help, and they will literally sit there as like, well, I'm expecting you to do everything for me. The devil is a liar. There's another scripture that says here in Proverbs chapter 1, verse number 7. It says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. So the Bible says a person that despises wisdom and instruction, you're trying to help them. It calls them a fool. This is the word of God. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. So here it is. You're trying to give them wisdom. Listen, bro. There's places higher. Listen, I know people that, that need help. Listen, my sister. Listen, go on indeed.com. And you're giving them the ways to get help. And it's like, they're just going to sit there. Well, I want you to help me. Like, bro, do you not realize we all got bills? That we all got responsibilities? That we all have stuff that we need to take care of? And sometimes you're looking at a person thinking that they got it like that. And the person that you're looking at don't got it like that. It just looks like that. Because we assume. So you got so many people that assume, oh, you got it. You must got it. You got it. No, I got faith. 
I trust God. And if you trust God and do what the word say, he will meet your needs too. We got to stop trying to be God to people because now we're getting in his way and then you can cause an attack on your finances because you're being God to somebody whose attention he's trying to get. That's right, my brother. He said, my faith keeps me. He said, people only knew. And look at that. You a public figure. You know, you, you on social media probably what, got hundreds of thousands of followers. So everybody probably thinking you got money like that, Devontae. But like you say, my brother, it's your faith that's keeping you. People need faith. We got to stop being dependent upon people and learn how to depend on God. Good morning. That's right, my brother CJ say, yes, sir. So here it is. We try to be friends to people. First of all, some of these people aren't our friends. They're just there because of what they can get from you. So they smile in your face. They act like they're cool with you. They act like they care about you only because they're benefiting from being connected to you. But the moment that they no longer have a benefit from you, their need for you changes. Because now I'm getting what I can from you. But the moment you stop giving me what I think I can get out of you, that's when my, my, the way that I treat you changes. That's when the way that I respond to you changes because now I'm no longer getting, I'm no longer benefiting from you. Some of you people are only connected to you because they're benefiting from you. He said, I'm sitting here with tears in my eyes. I needed this. To God be the glory, my brother. So you got people that's connected to you because they benefit from your, your popularity. Because you got hundreds of thousands of followers of people that benefit because of what you do. And they feel like, well, as long as I can, I can get what I want out of him. Do you know that God is no respect of a person? And the same thing that God does through one person, he can do through you. But the problem is that you just won't yield yourself to God. That's the problem. We don't want to do what the words say. So here it is. Somebody that's being faithful, doing what the words say. You want to use their access to God to benefit you. And it doesn't work like that. So because this person is faithfully tithing, this person is faithfully sowing, they're not robbing God. They're giving God his 10%. And because of that, he's rebuking the devourer for their namesake. He's opening up the windows of heaven. He's pouring out blessings for this person. So now you want to connect to this person that God is raining his favor on because of their obedience. And you want to benefit from their obedience. And it does not work like that. And some of us for too long, we've, uh, we've been allowing the wrong people to benefit from our obedience. And now it's bringing an attack on your finances, on your access, because you're trying to help the wrong people. I want you to come in on the stream. Come on. They got to depend on God. I want you to declare that they need to depend on God. My friends, my family, my associates, those that are connected to me, they need to depend on God. Can everybody come at that today? They need to depend on God. I'm not God. Ms. Rhonda say, preach. I've been going through this all my life. I'm just sitting down. I'm just a down-to-earth person. Um, I got it. They got, if I got it, they got it. But, I, but let me tell you something. It's no longer if I got it, they got it. Because they need to depend on God. I've been like that too, Ms. Rhonda. It's no longer if I got it, they got it. Because here it is. You're stopping what God wants to release to you because you keep running to the rescue for the wrong people. And now you're wondering, why my finances is being attacked? Why I don't have enough for my bills? Why I don't have, God said, because you took what I gave to you to bless you because of your obedience. You're the one tithing. You're the one sowing. You're the one doing what my words say. They're not doing it. And now you're giving what I'm blessing you with to the wrong people. And it's not you say helping the right people with the wrong intentions. No, we're helping the wrong people. It's not the right people with the wrong intentions. You just got to stop. Because some of these people are dependent upon you because they're too lazy. They don't want to go to God because they know what going to God requires um, obedience. So instead of them obeying the word of God, they want a quick way out. They're looking for a quick way out. How can I just get you to help me with my bills for now? How can I get you to give me what I need now instead of doing what? Can I tell you something? And I'm a preacher to every person obey the word of God. Tithing stops the curse. The Bible says, will a man rob God? He said, yet you are robbing me. Then he said, well, how? Then you say, well, how am I robbing you, God? He say, in tithing offering. Then he say, you're cursed with the curse. So this is why you ain't got no money to pay your bills. 
This is why you in and out of the hospital. This is why you got to beg and ask everybody for assistance. This is why you always um, going to pay the advance stuff, look, trying to get loans. Apply for assistance everywhere. All because you refuse to do what the word say. Can everybody say just obey the word? Come on, I want you to comment that. Just obey the word. We make things so complicated, but if you just do it, the word of God say God will honor his word concerning you. Tithing stops the curse. That's all. Just obey the word. You make it so complicated. You ain't got to beg and ex um, Peter and Paul and everybody else. Good morning, my brother Chris Bender. You ain't got to ex everybody to help you if you just give Give God what belongs to God. Listen, he said, give Caesar what belongs to Caesar and give God what belongs to God. So we give Caesar what belongs to Caesar. But get this, Caesar going to take what belongs to him. Because one thing about the government, they take their taxes right off top. They don't give you the liberty of deciding whether or not you can give it. I love you too, Chris. They don't give you the liberty. But one thing about God, he's so sovereign. He's so merciful. He's so kind that he don't force you to tithe. He gives you the liberty to prove your love for him. He gives you the option. He don't say, let me take my tithe off like the government do. He don't say, like they take their taxes. He don't say, let me take out my tithe. Let me take my 10%. He say, no, I want you to show me that you love me. So he gives you your money. He say, the ball is your, in your court. That's why he say, choose you this day who you will serve. So he say, I'm not going to force you to tithe. I want you to show me that you love me. So he gives you your resources and he said, here, here, my child, you show me that you love me. Give and it shall be given. But get this, he said, good measure, pressed down, shaking together and running over shall men give unto your bosom. But he gives you that option. He said, baby, you give it to me. I want to feel your love. I, want, I don't want to feel like I'm forcing you to love me. I, want to, I don't want to feel like it. This isn't a nonprofit. We're a ministry. Okay. Hallelujah. Listen, and so, so he said, I want you to show me that you love me. Show me. And that's because he's a gentleman. He's loving, he's kind, he's merciful. So now we're upset and wondering, well, why I don't have enough for my bills? Why ain't got, because you don't tithe, bro. So now you're depending on me to pay your bills? You're depending on me to run to the rescue and give you what you need? It don't work like that. You got to give God what belongs to God. All he asks for is 10%. And he said, I'll rebuke the devourer for your name's sake. He said, listen, I'm going to open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you have not room enough to receive. Tithing stops sickness. Tithing stops the attack that the enemy tries to send against your life. You wonder why you're going through constant warfare? Because you keep robbing God. And then we get mad at the messenger. Good morning, Demario. We get mad at the pastor and be like, well, well why is it about the money? Well, we got to give money to God. Why you don't fight? We're going to the department stores asking, why I got to give you money for tennis shoes? Why I got to give you money? Why you don't tell the, the landlord? Why I got to give you money to stay in your house? Why I got to give money for this? Why do we only make up excuses when it comes to the one that's, that's able to give us life and life more abundantly? The one that's keeping us in our right mind. The one that's giving us breath to, to breathe, eyes to see, ears to hear, new mercies every morning. Why do we fight with the one that's holding our life in his hands, but we freely give it to the things that don't benefit us at all? You want to know why it's a fight to give to God? Because the devil know that once you release it to the right one, every demonic dark that's coming against your life got to lose you. Tithing stops the curse. It does. It's a divine exchange. It's literally your spiritual insurance policy. There are promises that God promised every believer and it comes through our obedience. Everybody wants the blessings of God, but don't nobody want to give God what belongs to him. We want his increase. We want his favor. We want his open doors. We want his promotion. We want his advancement. We want his healing. We want breakthrough. We want everything from him, right? As we sit here and say, no, God, you got to give it to me while I do nothing. And it doesn't work like that. It doesn't. I know everybody want us to just tell them these little messages that tickle and fancy in them. But the Bible says that the word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. It cuts. What does that mean? That means it's cutting out selfishness. It's cutting out pride. It's cutting out arrogance. Arrogance. It's cutting out all those things from within me that don't need to be there. Why? Because those things are causing distance to, from me and God. The word cuts. Good morning, my sister Danita. Love you. The word cuts. Love you too, Demonte. You hear me? 
I believe I did, my brother. I'll check to see. It cuts. God wants to cut out of those things from within us that's keeping us distant from him. Amen, my brother. I'm going to pray over you. See, you say you're believing God for a miracle. You're speaking overflow. Father, I thank you for the seed that came from my brother, Devante. God, even as he released the seed in faith, he said he's believing you for a miracle, that he needs overflow. You said in your word, God, that you give seed to the sower. And that you'll increase the harvest of our righteousness. So, Father, I speak increase over this man of God. I pray that you will multiply his seed for sowing. God, give him back even greater than what he's released into this soil. And we declare an immediate release in Jesus' name. Watch God do it for you, my brother. But I want to say this, people of God. We want God to be to us what we're not willing to be to God. And it doesn't work like that. It doesn't. Everybody want God to be faithful. Everybody want God to bless them with a new home. But what if I told you that some of you, you don't even have to save up for that new home. If you are a faithful tither, the Bible say that God, that heart of the king is in his hand. Do you know that God can turn the hearts of people to favor you where you ain't even got to pay what you thought you had to pay? But the key is that we can't rob him. Some of you busy saving up for certain things that God want to give to you. Debt free, no money. You saving up for stuff. Well, I can't tie because I'm saving to get this new home. I'm saving this. And God said, baby, I want to give you a home. But you're too busy holding to give the, you're, you're holding to give to the man instead of giving it to the man, the king of kings. You're trying to give it to things in this world. And God said, I want to give you a home. Do you know that there are elderly people feel like they're on their way to die looking for people to just write off their house to? Looking for people to just give their cars to own 20 vehicles because they've been rich, wealthy, children, they don't have any kids and just want to give their stuff away. And God can put you in line for a blessing like that if you put him first while you're trying to save for something God want to give to you for free. Just freely release it to you. But we can't rob him. We can't. Tithing literally stops the curse. And the Bible say, if you don't tithe, you are cursed with a curse. What does that mean? That's why you keep being attacked in your health. That's why every time you turn, I'm going to pray over your tithe, woman of God. Give me a moment. That's why every time you turn, it's like one thing after another. It's like, God, what's going on? Can I tell you what's going on? You can't forget God. The Bible say he's a jealous God. That he will not share his glory with anybody. So God is watching as we keep Neiman Marcus open, as we keep Prada open, as we keep Louis Vuitton open, as we keep our favorite department stores open, as we keep our favorite restaurants open. So he's watching as we contribute to everything else in the world. We keep the gas station businesses in operation because every day we got to put gas in our cars or every other day or whatever. So he watches how we keep everything else in operation. But when it comes to his will, we don't contribute anything, but we say, God, I need increase. God, I need favor. God, I need breakthrough. God, I need healing. God is like, well, what about my will? I watch you take care of everybody else's will. I watch you keep everything else in operation. But what about me? What about souls being won before I return? What about heaven being packed with souls? Who's going to contribute to my will in the earth? So we got liquor stores open on every corner. We got strip clubs open on every corner. So the devil, we freely increase in the devil system as the church decreases get smaller and smaller and smaller because nobody's contributing to the things of God, but everybody want to run to God for increase. It's a divine exchange. That's right, Jay, Mr. Williamson. He gives seed to the sower. That's the word of God. But the problem is that people don't believe in sowing, but they won't see. <laughs> they don't believe in sowing. But let me tell you something. I'm sorry. I'm going to pray for your time, Miss Christia. I want to teach you this, people of God. In order to break the spirit of poverty off your life, you got to sacrifice. Do you know that you can't pray away poverty? You can't pray, oh God, I need a financial miracle. The only way to break poverty is through sacrifice. Because the Bible says that he gives seed to the sower. So in order for me to give you my seed, you must first become a sower. The reason why you're bound with poverty and lack, because you don't sow. Every time I've given you something, you keep forgetting about me. But I can't put anything in a closed hand. You got to be a sower. That's the word. Genesis 8 and number 22, he says, as long as the earth remains, there will be seed time and harvest. The reason why so many people aren't experiencing the harvest of God, because they don't believe in releasing seed. So God can't trust you. 
And then we get jealous and mad at people that we see God blessing, that we see God favoring, that we see God opening doors for us. But you can't be mad at somebody that's in covenant with God. Somebody ought to come and stop being jealous. Come on, I want you to declare that. Tell your neighbor, stop being jealous. Come on, stop being jealous because of the favor that's on my family. Stop being jealous because of the favor that's on my children. Stop being favored because I'm jealous because of the favor that's raining down on me and my marriage or whatever. Because we are in covenant with God. We're tithers. We're sowers. We don't rob him. So why are you getting mad at the favor that's on our life? Because we're doing what the word say. If you do what the word say, he'll favor you too. I bind that spirit of jealousy, covet, covetness, wanting what other people got all because you want to be lazy, robbing people. Man, do you know that the Bible says that the eyes of the Lord are everywhere beholding the good and the bad? So when you think you're going to rob and steal from somebody else, that thing came right back on you. Do you know that the Bible also said that if you live by the sword, you die by the sword? So we're wondering why so many young people are dying because of their robbing and killing people. So now the same thing you're doing to other people in private because you're trying to get money fast, you end up dying the same way. Go rob somebody, take money, don't even have it 10 minutes and you end up dying with the money you just stole. Why? Because if you live by the sword, you're going to die by it. So now you're thinking you're going to take the fast way out and rob somebody, get their little resources because you're like, well, I need some quick money. Get the money and die as soon as you get it. Why? Because you live by the sword, you're going to die by it. Instead of just making an honest living. Doing what the words say. Giving God what belongs to him. This is why we see so many people prematurely die. Because in private, a lot of these people are taking innocent people's lives. A lot of these people in private are robbing and stealing. And then we want to call, um, cry police brutality. And we want to have marches. And we want to be like, they taking our young black people's life. But perhaps that young black boy was robbing and stealing and killing in private. And just like Cain killed his brother Abel because he found favor with God, he got jealous. Because Abel sacrificed. Abel gave God something he can feel. So God favored Abel. Abel. He received Abel's sacrifice. So Cain got jealous when he killed his brother. And guess what? He thought that nobody would know. I love you too, my, my sister Lakeisha. He thought that nobody would know. So he goes, so God said, Cain, where's your brother? Cain like got nervous like, Lord, what, what you mean? He said his brother, his blood is crying out from the ground. So can I say something to you, to those who are involved in gangs and cliques and, and occultic stuff, and you're doing demonic stuff, hurting or harming people, can I tell you the truth? You may think nobody saw or see what you're doing, but their blood is crying out from the ground. And just like Abel blood cried out from the ground, God saw it. And Cain thought that nobody would knew that he killed his brother because he found favor with God. So some of you are jealous, seeing what God is doing in other people's lives, trying to kill them, take what they got, and God is going to knock you down. And you won't last. You won't last. You steal from them and you end up dying with the very thing you stole from. Come out, Judas. Look what happened with Judas. Here it is. He could have got anything that he wanted. I'm going to pray over y'all. Um, Todd, give me a moment. Those, um, Ramir, I'm going to pray over your seed. You're believing God for increase. Father, I thank you. Um, remind me where I'm at by Judas, just in case I don't remember. Father, I thank you for the seed that came from Ramir. Father, even as she's releasing this seed in faith because she's believing you for increase. God, you said in your word that whatsoever we sow, that shall we reap. So, God, I pray that this woman of God will release a, will reap a harvest like never before. Father, increase her, cover her, strengthen her, and give her back even greater than what she released. Father, I thank you for the tithing offering that came from Miss Christia. Father, even as she's giving you the 10% that belongs to you, Father, I bind every attack of the enemy that would try to come against her peace. I speak healing to her body. I speak peace to your mind, Miss Christia, and I declare because of your obedience that God is rebuking the hand of the devourer. That means whatever was sent to destroy you, don't worry, God got it. Father, fight for Miss Christia today in her family. In Jesus' name, watch God do it because tithing stops the curse. So here, come here, Judas. So Judas goes and betrays Jesus. Now here it is. You can get anything you want out of this man. Somebody that loves you, therefore you giving you whatever you want. And there it is with, not a broadcast, okay, it's messing up on Facebook. These witches and warlocks be all over Facebook, but we declare that nothing will stop what God is doing. So here it is, Judas goes and betrays Jesus for 30 pieces of shekels. Now here it is, this is a man, you could get whatever you want out of him. Somebody that loves you, 
Whatever you ask, they're giving it to you. If you need healing, if you need peace, whatever you need, they're there to give it to you. And you're going to be jealous of somebody that you got direct access to. Goes and betray Jesus for 30 pieces of shekels. These men go and get him, arrest him after he done kissed Jesus on the cheek for these 30 pieces of shekels. And get this, got the money and couldn't even enjoy it. Couldn't even enjoy the money. Couldn't even. So here it is. After the demons tell him to go betray Jesus for this little 30 pieces of shackles of money, here come the demons after he done betrayed Jesus and told him to kill himself. And this is exactly what the devil's doing with many people today. While you going robbing and stealing, taking from innocent people, doing all kinds of crimes, hurting and harming people, here come the devil come right back and destroy you after you did what he told you to do. The Bible says he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. So he may he talks you into something. Once you do it, he make you destroy yourself in it. So he tells Judas to betray Jesus. He betrays him. Get the money. And couldn't even enjoy the money. And many of you, the devil telling you to rob, to steal, to kill, to take advantage of people. And once you get the stuff that he talked you into doing, you won't even be able to enjoy it. Won't even be able to enjoy it. It won't last. It won't even last. Because now he comes and torments you. Play with your mind. Make you feel bad. You feel horrible. And you're like, why did I do this? Why did I do this? Oh, man. Because now God is going to take vengeance on behalf of whoever you just went and robbed and killed or stole from. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. Just go on Indeed.com and get a job. Just go apply applications. Go look for work the honest way. But robbing and stealing and killing, taking innocent people's life that didn't do no wrong to you? It's not worth it. I saw a video online. I'm going to pray over your arm. Um, Father, I thank you. Sorry. For the seed that came from Tykeria. She said she's believing you for breakthrough and blessings. Father, even as this woman of God released this seed in faith, Father, I declare breakthrough to your daughter. I speak increase. I speak favor. And Lord, I pray that you will multiply her seed for sowing. In the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you for the seed that came from LaRonda Bishop. She said, release all evil demonic spirits from off of my family. Father, I rebuke and bind every demonic plot from off of her family. I command every demonic dart to release her family and go back to the pits of hell. Father, I speak peace. I speak healing. I speak restoration. God, I pray that you restore everything that the locust and canker worm has tried to eat up from our family. Cover them and shield them from every plan and plot of the enemy. In the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you for the tithe that came from edge. God, you said in your word in Malachi chapter 3 that you'll open up the windows of heaven and pour out blessings that they have not room enough to receive. Father, I speak blessings, favor, increase, abundance over the edge family. God, move for them like never before. I pray, God, that you will give BJ peace that surpasses all understanding. Help him to realize that you have everything working together for his good because he's putting you first. And God, we say thank you in Jesus' name. I saw a video and these guys had just robbed somebody and they was leaving the scene fast, flying in the car, had just robbed somebody, thinking that they're going to go turn up off of whatever they just stole. Big old semi tractor the trailer truck comes by. Boom, crashes, smashes the car. And instantly, all the guys that was robbing and stealing from people that was on a high-speed chase die. And they wake up to immediate torment by demons. Can I tell you something, people of God? Hell is real. Hell is real. And you got people right now that were involved in gangs and cliques and occultic stuff that's been doing all kind of demonic foolishness right now in hell being tormented by demons wishing that they could come back and warn people that was in the gangs to come out of. Hell is real. It's real. Lakeisha is frozen. Try coming out then coming back in. Hell is real. So I want to say this to you people of God. Don't allow the devil to talk you into something. The, the connection messing up. Let me let me wait because um, Facebook is keep going in and out. But we bind every assignment of the enemy that will try to stop people from hearing what the Lord is saying. In the name of Jesus, let me tell y'all uh, now. But let me say this: 
Don't allow the enemy to talk you into um, trying to um, get a check to cash a check that you can't cash. How the old folks would say, don't get a check that don't write a check that you can't cash. So some of you, you're trying to write a check for something that you can't cash, and the enemy end up destroying you in the midst of it. Hell is real. It's real. Come out of the gangs. Come out of the cliques. Come out of the occultic stuff. If you give God what belongs to him, God will bless you too. And you ain't got to be jealous of nobody. You ain't got to take advantage of nobody. You ain't got to try to pimp and try to set nobody up. God want to bless you. He want to favor you. Some of you, you're selling drugs. You're in business, but you're just in the wrong business. You got the business mentality. Because you're, you're that entrepreneur, how to sell and how to do that. But you're just in the wrong business. God want to bless you. He want to favor you. He want to open doors for you. But you got to come out of whatever you're doing and give God what belongs to him. He want to increase you. He want to multiply you. You hear me? He want to multiply you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Keisha. He want to multiply you. But you got to put God first. He's a jealous God. He's a jealous God. So I want to say this to you, people of God. If you have not accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I want to extend to you that invitation. Make Jesus your Lord and Savior. God wants to bless you. He wants to increase you. He wants to favor you. He wants to open doors for you. He wants to heal your body. But get this, tithing stops the curse. He wants you to be faithful to him. Just like you want him to increase you, God wants to be a part of the increase. He does. He don't want to be put on the back burner. So I want to offer Christ to you today. Please make the best decision you could have ever made in your life by making Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior. And if you know that you forgot about God, you've been doing your own thing, you're like, listen, I've been focusing on my own agenda, my own needs, my own wants, and you ain't been stunned, God. Repent. Make it right with God. Tell God you're sorry. Because all of us have been there. You hear me? All of us have been there where we focus on our own agenda and put God last. And because of that, it brought an attack on our own lives. All right? So repeat after me because God wants to push us all into a place of where he wants to release overflow to you. He wants to increase you. But tithing stops the curse. And because of that, we got so many people that's giving thousands of dollars on prescriptions and medications every month, all because they're too stingy to give God what belongs to him. Man, God will take you off that prescription. God will take you off of all that unnecessary medication. He said, I will rebuke the devourer for your name's sake. That means whatever was sent to attack your health, God will take you off it. But the problem is that we're more comfortable giving to the hospitals, the pharmaceutical industries, than just giving God his little 10% so that his word could keep being preached, souls could keep being one, all because we want to be stingy. You hear me? Tithing stops the curse. Miss Shaniqua, um, it's not much. Um, can you please name your seed what you need from God, sweetheart? You say it's not much. That's fine. But name your seed what you need God to do. All right? Please do that. Name your seed. All right? Miss Shaniqua, I just refunded it back to you for you to name it. All right? Thank you, Lord. Amen. Please name your seed what you. Please name your seed what you need God to God to do. All right, so I just refunded you back what you sent. Miss Shaniqua, please name your seed. So over here, we don't just send money. We name, we put our seeds on assignment. The Bible says, whatsoever you sow, that shall you reap. So we don't just send money just to send it. We're putting a demand in the spirit. We're believing God to do something, and God responds to faith. The Bible says, faith without works is dead. So whenever we're sowing, we're literally working our, our faith. We're putting a demand in the spirit, and God responds to our faith. Amen. But I want to, um, if you're watching me today, People of God, I want to make sure that we're in right standing with God. God wants to bless his people, but it requires obedience. Amen. So first, we're going to go through the prayer of repentance. Every, every believer that's on here this morning, we're going to repent. We're going to ask God to forgive us. All right. For putting him last, for forgetting about him. Amen. For our disobedience, our error. And guess what we're going to do after we ask for forgiveness? We're going to do what's right. We're not going to forget him. Amen. 
We're going to put God first because tithing stops the curse. You can't expect God to be to you what you're not willing to be to him. Stop asking him to increase you for you to keep increasing the world and not the kingdom. Amen. Because increase comes to those who don't forget about God. If I'm going to increase you, I want to be a part of the increase, right? So his kingdom must come first. But we're using his increase to increase the world instead of the kingdom of God. And it doesn't work like that. Amen. So every believer, I want you to repeat after me. We're going to repent. We're going to ask God for forgiveness. And for those of you that never accepted Christ, um, we're going to go through the prayer of salvation. Amen. Repeat after me, um, every believer. Heavenly Father, I just want to say thank you. Hold on one second. The, um, the live went out. Okay. Heavenly Father, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for your grace and your mercy. God, I thank you for not giving up on me. Now, Father, it is written in your word that if I will confess my sins, that you're faithful and you're just enough to forgive me and to cleanse me from all unrighteousness. So, Father, make sure you repeat after me. I confess, God, I've sinned. I've forgotten about you. i focused on my own agenda. God, I've been robbing you of your tithing offering and using it for my own fleshly gain. And I ask, Father, that you will please forgive me. Father, create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Everybody say amen. And for those of you that never accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I want to extend to you that invitation. Listen, the Lord is so soon to come. Amen. He's so soon to come. And it's so important that we make sure that we make Jesus our Lord and Savior. Amen. Thank you, Lord. It's so important. Thank you, Lord. Um, the, hold on. Connection went out. All right. Um, so those of you that are on here, it's so important that we make sure um, that my life lines up with the will of God. Amen. It's so important. I'm going to pray over your seat. Those of you that are sowing, um, give me a moment. All right. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. All right. So um, bear with me. But um, so those of you that never accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I want you to repeat after me. So sorry for coming to your DM to disturb you. Um, amen. Let me block this person because everybody be DM, DMing me for money. And it's, 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 it's ridiculous. Amen. Uh, hold on one second. It's sad. I mean, it's like, Lord, here it is. You give the people the necessary tools of what to do. Hold on. Go on this site to apply for work. Amen. Indeed.com. I mean, it's sad. Everybody wants a quick way out instead of just doing what the words say. Amen. Thank you, Lord. It's sad. Indeed.com. The airlines need like 50,000 flight attendants, y'all. I used to be a flight attendant. There's so many jobs that are hiring right now. So people blatantly refuse to just do what the words say. I declare and decree and I tell and you as a teacher, God going to supply my needs. Amen. All right. So listen, um, those of you. All right. So if you've never accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, we're going to go through the prayer of salvation. Every believer. I mean, those of you that never accepted him, repeat after me. All right. Heavenly Father. And let me say this. A lot of times the devil tries to play with your mind and make you feel like, well, I still got a life to live. I'm young. Um, I don't need to accept him yet. That's a lie from the pits of hell. Don't you dare listen to that foolishness. Don't do that. Let me tell you something. No man knows the day nor the hour when the son of man will return. And when he does return, we want to be found in right standing, right? Amen. We want to be ready when he returns. So every believer, hallelujah. I mean, those of you that have never accepted Christ, I want you to repeat after me. Now the lives start pausing. All right. So every, um, those of you that never accepted Christ, or maybe you did years ago when you were younger, but you don't remember, repeat after me. All right. Um, I want to take Jesus in my heart. Amen. Blanca says she want to accept Jesus in her heart. To God be the glory. Repeat after me. All right. Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you for waiting on me. God, I thank you for not giving up on me. Now, Father, it is written. In Romans 10, verse 9, that if I will confess the Lord Jesus and believe in my heart that you raised him from the dead, I shall be saved. Father, today, September 22nd, 2023, I confess 
Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. And I believe in my heart that you raised him from the dead. Now, Father, it is written that I shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon me. So I ask God that you will fill me with the baptism of the Holy Ghost and with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Father, please give me the power to cast out demons, to lay hands on the sick, to open the blinded eyes, to see the lame walk, to see the dumb talk. Father, I recognize that we're living in the end times. And Lord, your return is so near. So I ask God that you will keep me in your perfect will and use me to snatch as many souls out of darkness into your marvelous light. Father, please get the glory out of every area of my life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Everybody say amen. Amen. Everybody say amen. And after you say amen, I want to make sure that we all cover ourselves. It's so important, y'all, that every day we make sure that we put on our armor. I'm going to pray over your seed. Those of you that are sowing, give me a moment. I'm going to pray over your, um, your seed and your tithe. But it's so important, y'all, that every day we make sure that we're covered spiritually. The Bible talks about putting on the whole armor of God. You don't ever want to leave home spiritually naked. You don't ever want to leave home spiritually naked. You want to make sure that you're always armored up. Because let me tell you what the Bible say. He say we wrestle not against flesh and blood. It's a spiritual battle. Wickedness in high places. Can I tell you something? Before anything manifests in the physical realm, it first happens in the spirit. I'm not going to, I didn't come on here to teach on this today. But how do you think witchcraft happens? It first starts in the spirit before it materializes in the physical so somebody goes and release a sacrifice to somebody because they want something to happen or something to block or something to stop for somebody. So first, in the spirit, that person becomes chained or bound. And then physically, it starts to manifest where they start losing stuff and then different things start happening. They're losing their job. Health starts declining. All because of what? A sacrifice that somebody went and took to a witch or warlock. But the problem is we're too stingy to sacrifice to God. If money... It's so powerful that it can make somebody become bound, curse, lose stuff. Imagine what money can do when it gets in the hands of the right person, when we're sacrificing to Jesus. And this is why the devil don't want you giving to God, because money is so powerful. If money can bring curses and stop something that block people, imagine the increase, the favor, the open doors, the promotion, the acceleration, the healing, the breakthrough, the extended life that can happen when we sacrifice to God. That's how powerful money is. And this is why the devil wants to block us from giving to God. He literally wants us to keep our mind on where's the money going? Why do I got to give to this? What is the pastor doing? What is the church giving with the money? Why I got to give to this? My pro our, our focus should be once I release to God what belongs to God, whatever they do with it, it's between God because I've given God what belongs to him. And now God got to respond to his word concerning, concerning my life. He got to rebuke the devourer for my name's sake. He got to open up the windows of heaven for me. He got to extend my years of life. He got to protect me from danger seen and unseen. He got to fight for me. He got to take vengeance on my behalf. When the enemy comes in like a flood, he got to lift up a standard. It's a divine exchange. Money is so powerful that if it could bring a curse, imagine it increase the favor, the healing that it can make happen too. But the problem is that we're too stingy to sacrifice to God, but we freely give to the devil. That's why it's not a fight to give to liquor stores. That's why it's not a fight to give to your favorite restaurants. It's easy to increase the world, but it's a fight to give to God because the devil knows once you're giving to the right one, every demonic force that's been holding you in the spirit realm got to loose you. Joe said, you're truly talking to my spirit pastor. To God be the glory. People don't know that. If we knew the power of money, I'm telling you what it does in the spirit realm. Anything you're giving to, you are literally in covenant with that. So when you're giving to people at the strip clubs and all this and stuff, and you're giving a liquor store, you're telling the devil that you're in covenant with his agenda in the earth. Now, when you're giving to the things of God, you're now telling God, I am in covenant with your word. I believe your word is true. Amen. It shifts things in the spirit realm. Thank you, Trivia. I love you, my sister. It shifts things in the spirit. Sacrifice is powerful. 
Can everybody come at that? Sacrifice is powerful. I want everybody to come at that on the stream. Sacrifice is powerful. It's powerful. Because every day we sacrifice. We sacrifice to put gas in our car. We sacrifice to get groceries. Everything we're giving to, we are literally sacrificing to it. But yet we tell God, I don't got to sacrifice you. Well, I got to give you money. Well, I got to sacrifice you. It's not about that. It's not about the money. God don't need my money. It's about your sacrifice. And if you look in the Bible, every time they came before God, they had a sacrifice. Nobody ever came before God empty handed in the Bible. Cain sacrificed, Abel sacrificed, Abraham was getting ready to sacrifice his son. The three wise men went to go sacrifice. The king was last in that he was about to go sacrifice to Jesus, but really he went to go kill every newborn baby because he knew that someone was born that was about to change the course of the world. Sacrifice is powerful. So now that you say sacrifice is powerful, I want to ask you, who are you sacrificing to? Uh-oh. Because every day, we sacrifice to somebody. Are you sacrificing to God? Or are you sacrificing to the God of this world, the devil? Satan, that's the prince of the air. Because every day, we sacrifice. So my question is, who are you sacrificing to? That's what it all boils down to. So the reason why there's such a heavy attack on your life, because you've been sacrificing to the wrong one. You hear me? You've been sacrificing to the right one. Some of us have. The right one is Jesus. And that's why some of you see increase in your business. That's why some of you see favor, open doors. You see blessings overtaking your children. Why? Because because I'm a tither, everything that's connected to me is blessed. So everything in my household got to be blessed. Because of my obedience to God, Mr. Wayne, um, can you please name your seat, my brother? Amen. Um, please don't send anything without naming it. All right, Wayne. Hold on one second, y'all. He sent it to my personal cash app. Let me refund this back, y'all. Hold on one second. Thank you, Lord. Well, I'm telling you, the devil is something else. So you're going to send money to my personal cash app without naming it. Like, I'm not going to send it back. Like, bro, come on now. You think I'm, who is this? Let's see who this is. I don't know who this is. Wayne, I don't know who this is. Wayne. Um, listen, y'all, can you please send to the ministry cash app, Heaven's Impact? All right. And if you're sewing, please name your seat. Hold on, let me just respond back to this person that just sent something. Hold on. Hold on one second. Hold on. One second, I'm sorry, y'all. Please send to the ministry cash out, y'all, not to my personal one when I'm live, because then I have to click out the seed. And if you're not naming the seed, that's a, that's a distraction. Amen. Please name your seed. And then people calling my phone. Eight six zero area code. Eight six zero area code. Somebody called me from an eight six zero. So listen, I'm sorry about that. Those of you that are watching on um, Instagram, but somebody sent a seed to my personal cash app, but they didn't name it. Please, if you're sowing, name the seed, y'all. Please don't send anything without naming it, all right? Did we put on our armor yet, y'all? I don't, I don't know if we did, did we? All right, so listen, let's cover ourselves. Everybody that's on here, I want you to repeat after me. The Bible talks about putting on the whole armor of God that we'll be able to stand against the wiles of the enemy. So I want you to repeat after me. That way we know that we're covered, amen? All right, so repeat after me. Heavenly Father, it is written in Ephesians 6, verse 11, to put on the whole arm of God that I'll be able to stand against the wiles of the enemy. So right now, Father, in the name of Jesus, I place on the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, I gird my loins with the belt of truth. I shod my feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. I take up the shield of faith that I will be able to quench every fiery dart of the enemy and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Therefore, I am fully armored and no weapon 
that is formed against me shall prosper. And every tongue that rises against me shall be condemned. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Everybody say amen. Now listen, the Bible say that the angels in heaven are rejoicing because of the soul that just gave their life to Jesus Christ. So what I want us to do, every believer that's on here, let's rejoice with those on um, the angels in heaven. Now, let's hit the hearts. Let's show some love. Th thank you, Miss Christia. Thank you to those who are sending gifts on TikTok. I speak a thousand for return back in Jesus' name. But every believer, let's hit the hearts. Let's show some love to those who just accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And let's make them feel welcome. I want you to come and welcome to the family. Amen. I couldn't find the Heaven's Impact Cash App. All right. Um, so, yeah, if you, um, but send it to the Heaven's Impact Cash App. All right. Heaven's with one S in Impact. All right. It's the one that says Happy Birthday Cornelius on there. But make sure that you send it to that one and name your seat, what you believe in God to do. Amen. But listen, yeah, thank you so much to those of you that are welcome to the family. This is what it's all about, y'all. And I want to say this. Um, welcome to eternal life. Do you know the Bible say that he that winneth souls is wise? The most important thing to God is not how much money you got, not how many cars you own, not how many houses you got, how much materialistic thing. Do you know the most important thing to God is souls? So whenever you're giving to the kingdom of God, you're sowing, you're tithing, you're contributing to the things of God. You are helping God to reach souls before he returns. You hear me? So because of that, can I tell you something? This is why God has to fight for you. Because you're keeping souls, you're, you're impacting heavens and so calling, causing souls to make it to heaven. So because you're contributing to souls getting to make it to heaven, God got to take care of you. Because my obedience is saving souls. Every time I'm giving to the things of God, this is why you can't give the tithe to somebody that's struggling financially. You can't give the tithe to a homeless person or, oh, my family member need help with their bills, so I'm going to give my tithe to them. You can't. The Bible say that the tithe is holy unto God. So you have to give what's holy to God so that his word could keep being preached, so that souls could keep being one, so that his will keeps going in the earth. So as you take care of his will, he got to take care of your will. You can't give the tithe to your family that's struggling financially. You can't give the tithe to your cousin because they behind on their light bill. That's like you're taking what's holy and you're saying, let me give it to you because you're robbing God. Because you don't tithe. Because you're not giving God. Let me, let me just give it to you to enable you to keep disobeying God. And that's why I say take care of yourself. Because some of us, we're trying to help everybody else and God is trying to get their attention. So you're getting in the way of God and it's bringing an attack on your finances. Somebody ought to come and get out God's way. Come on, I want you to come at that. Get out of God's way. I want you to come at that. Everybody declare that today. Tell your neighbor, get out of God's way. You got to get out of his way. You got to let God be God to your family, to your friends, to your neighbors, and let him be. Look, because now that you're trying to be God and run the rescue to them, it's causing you to be behind in your bills. It's causing you to be behind in what you need to take care of. So you got to get out of God's way and let God be God to them and teach them how to depend on God. No, you got to learn how to pray, bro. You got to learn how to tithe, my sister. You got to learn how to sow, my brother. Come on, stop asking everybody else to do for you what God is depending on you to do for yourself. Tithing stops to curse. You can't rob God and expect God to increase you. It's a divine exchange. Amen. Father, I thank you for the seed that came from Miss Valerie. Father, even as she's sowing the seed, she says she's believing you for financial increase. God, I speak increase over your daughter's life. I pray that you will multiply her seed for sowing. God, I thank you for the seed that came from my brother Joe. He said he's believing you for overflow. God, you said whatsoever we sow, that shall we reap. So because he sowed the seed, believing you for overflow, I declare overflow to your life, Joe. Increase his seed, God, in the name of Jesus. Amen. That's right, um, Keisha. That's so true. She says, sending thousands of folks who would have sent you $20 if you needed it. That's the truth. I've been there too, my sister. Some of the main people you help are nowhere to be found when you need it. Nowhere to be found. And I'm talking about people, you run to the rescue for them. You loan them money. And every time you look, you look, if you, let me tell you, you ain't even got to be looking for the money and they be ducking you. There's a lady getting ready to lose her restaurant. Didn't even know her from a can of paint, as the old folks would say. 
So here it is. I'm on ministry assignment. So I'm traveling, you know, doing ministry, feeding the homeless. I'm doing what God has us to do, right? Y'all know we travel, we bless people, we feed the homeless, we do all kind of stuff, right? So I'm on ministry assignment. And as I'm out of town on ministry assignment, this lady obviously follows me on social media, but try to act like, you know, she follow, you know how people, they, they see what you do across the world, but try to act like they don't know who you are, but asking you for help. No, because you see what we're doing on the internet. So you assume that I got it. And that's not the case. So here it is, this lady, and, and, and you know, she, um, she, oh, pastor, I just don't know what I'm gonna do. First of all, she comes to me fake crying, a nail tear fall out of her eye. I just, pastor, I just, I just, you know, pastor, I got this restaurant, and then, you know, my own pastor, it's just, uh, uh, I mean, Pastor, I just said, oh, Pastor, I don't know. <laughs> Ain't nail tear fall out of her eye. And I'm just looking. I'm like, Lord, I ain't, ain't nail tear fall out of her eye. I'm just looking at her like, Lord, look at this lady. Just ain't nail tear fall. And then she went to talk about, you know, because her kids, she don't want to lose her home and, and all this. And, and so I'm just like, I'm just sitting there. She came to my car at her restaurant saying this because I stopped at her soul food restaurant while I was out of town. You know, I was like, let me, you know, patronize. And I went a few times every time I would stop. You know, I leave them $20 as a tip and stuff. Bless the workers, $10 or $20 a piece. You know, so I know she follows me on social media. I'm not crazy because some of the stuff she would say, I'm like, this lady must see what we're doing across the world for her to be saying it because she's assuming that I have it. A lot of people assuming that you got it. All I got is faith. So here it is. She, uh, ooh, well, I just, uh, so I say, you know what? I say, Lord, I'm going to help her. So I gave her $1,000. Went to the ATM, gave her $1,000 cash. She gets the $1,000, right? Now this back when, you know, I was, I was able to give like that because, you know, like I was blessed, like, you know, it was coming like that, you know, so we're blessed with doing a lot of stuff back then. So here it is. I gave it a thousand dollars. Pastor, I'm going to give it right back to you. Pastor, what you doing Friday? Come by this Friday, Pastor. I'm going to give you the thousand dollars right back. Pastor, oh, Pastor. <laughs> now I'm tear falling out her eye. Love you too, Ray Walls. Oh, Pastor. Pastor, I'm going I'm going to come by, Pastor, come this Friday. I'm going to give it right back to you, Pastor. I just don't know, Pastor. First of all, I don't loan. If I give something to somebody, I give it from my heart. Because I don't give with any ulterior motives or agenda. You don't owe me anything. You hear me? So I gave her the $1,000, right? And so after that, what did she say? What did I come here? I'm tipping already to God. Look, so I gave her the $1,000, right? Now, mind you, I'm just coming by to get food from her restaurant. Every time I come, this lady running in the back. You hear me? I'm like, Lord, why is she ducking me? I don't want that money. I gave that from, I gave that from my heart as unto God because God is going to reward me. I'm not looking for my reward from men. Can everybody say my reward comes from God? I want you to declare that. This is why when I tithe, I'm not worried about what the pastor, what the church finna do with the money. I'm giving God his 10% of whatever they do between them and God. God gonna honor my obedience. He's gonna take care of me. That's right. My reward comes from God. Every time I'm coming to get food, this lady running in the back. You hear me? Every time. Running out, look, she would see my car in the front of her restaurant. She drives round the back, tiptoe in the back door, trying to beat me, you know, in a like the high in a restaurant so that I don't see it. I'm watching her drive around back, watching her trying to duck me going around the building. Then when I come in, get this. I, I go get food. Let me let me show you how she tried. Baby, I didn't give you money for food. I gave that to help you because you say you about to lose your restaurant and how you talking about your home and all this stuff. So I gave it unto the Lord. So I come in and she'll be like, oh, oh, Pastor, don't worry. I got you. I, I, I got you. You know, you ain't got to worry about that. 
I said, worry about what? Because I paid for everything that's on my plate. No, the extra, you know the extra that I gave you. I said, what extra? I said, what extra you gave me? The potato, remember the potato salad? That I, I said, sweetheart, I paid for that potato salad. Remember that come with my, my meal? Oh, oh, yeah, that's right, that's right. Girl, you ain't finna use no manipulation on me to make you think you paid me back my $1,000 and no food. God, I gave you that. That was a blessing. Then I come in, she be like, oh, oh, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm gonna put it here. What you want? You no, know, pick what you want. I said, no, I'm gonna pay for my food. I said, you don't have to give me my food for free. I said, you're a business, right? So you gotta pay your lights, your rent. You gotta pay to keep this restaurant. I'm not here for a handout. I said, I don't believe in taking advantage of people. So I say, you don't have to give me, you know, enough free food. I say, no, like, yeah, exactly, Lakeisha, using manipulation. So I say, then she told me, Pastor, I'm going to bake you a cake. I want you to come by. I'm going to have you a caramel cake because I had came back in town where she lived for an event. I had to sing um, at an event. So I was like, I said, um, I swam by her restaurant or whatever. And so she said, y'all, she was about to lose. Yeah, so here it is. Um, so I was back in town and she was like, oh, Pastor, she was like, listen, I'm going to bake you a whole caramel cake. Come by. I ain't even drive by. I called the restaurant, right? I, I called the day that she said the cake was going to be ready. Somebody else answered the phone. And I was like, hey, how you doing? Um, is the caramel cake ready? And they said, um, we have caramel cake for the store, um, for sale. I say, no, the whole cake that, um, that she made for the pastor, is it ready? They say, um, she didn't make a cake for, the, um, for anyone else. We have a, cake, a caramel cake that's cut up that we're selling by the slices. We already cut it. And um, they was like, well, can I call you back? I said, they was like, I'm going to call you back. That lady ain't never make no cake. Never make no cake. Just lying. Good morning, Miss Maxwell. Just lying. But get this. When I gave her the $1,000, I didn't just give it to her without instructions. Can I tell you what I did when I gave her the thousand dollars? I told her, I said, listen, ma'am, I'm going to give you this, but you got to be accountable to God. I say, listen, tithing stops the curse. The reason why you're almost about to lose your home for foreclosure, the reason why you're about to lose your business is because you can't rob God. I told her this. So I didn't just give her the thousand dollars to help her. I gave her instructions with the thousand dollars. You hear me? I said, ma'am, I said, you got to give God what belongs to him. I said, now I'm going to give you this to help you. But I say, you cannot forget about God. I say, all he asked for is 10%. I said, look at this. God bless you with a restaurant. She said the way that she got her restaurant, she don't even have to pay, you know, rent like the normal tenants in the building. She's in a restaurant where God has given her favor to be in that building. Where she's not paying what all the other tenants in that, that development is paying. God gave her favor in that restaurant. I said, ma'am, you got to give God what belongs to him. I say, tithing stops the curse. All he asks for is 10%. I said, what you need to start doing at the end of the day when you make your sales from the business. Take 10% of that. Give it to God. I say, even if you do it every day at the end of the day because you don't know how much you're making for the week with your business, just, just calculate all the sales for the day. Cash up into the, whatever ministry God leads you to, wherever you feel is fertile soil. I say, just give God his time. I say, watch how God stop you from losing your home. I say, watch how your home end up not going in foreclosure. Watch how God stop the foreclosure. Watch how God start to send business to your, your restaurant. Because there's no way that your restaurant is not packed right now. It should be packed, overflowing with people coming in. But the problem is when we rob God, he can't trust us with the increase. Because the Bible say, if you be faithful over the few things, I'll make you rule over many. He said to whom much is given, much is required. So God is saying, as I increase you, I'm requiring more out of you. You can't keep giving me last year's seed as I'm making you a millionaire. You can't keep giving me that same hundred and thousand dollars that you were giving before now that I made you a millionaire. You got to steward well because to whom much is given, much is required. I require more out of you because I've given you more. So I'm, I'm trusting you with more, which come, it comes with a huge responsibility. So get this. So, um, so here it is. 
Months flew by. I end up going back in town, right? Still, the lady starts ducking me. Oh, pastor, pastor. Oh, yeah. Um, what you doing this week? Every time I come, it's a different excuse. I need you to swing by because I got something for you, pastor. I Just lying. I saw one of her workers out, out, outside. Wait, wait, hold on. Where was it? Um, was it? I'm trying to think. Was it outside? I'm trying to think. I asked them something. I asked her about, uh, what did I, it was something I asked her about, you know, uh, about the pay. Like, you know, like, you know, like, is it like, do they get paid weekly or something like that? The girl was like, listen, you have no idea the issues we go through about getting paid here. Do you want to know why it's such a fight for her to be able to pay her employees and stuff? You can't rob God and expect God to increase you. All God asks us for is that little 10%. And get this, he said, I promise I'll rebuke the devourer. That means sickness. You ain't going to be in and out of no hospital paying unnecessary money and fees about your health. He said, I'm going to open up the windows of heaven. I'm going to pour out blessing that you have not room enough to receive. So all these benefits that come from our simple obedience and we rather blatantly rob God. Do you know that there are promises to those that give God what belongs to him? It's a divine exchange. That's why he told us give and it shall be given. But get this. He said, I'm not just going to give you what you gave me, but I'm going to give it back to you. Good measure. What does that mean? It's going to be so much going that it's going to be pressed down. So the blessing going to be so overflowing. God said, you're going to press it down. Then you're going to shake it together because you're still trying to make room because it's overflowing. You're going to press it down because it's so overflowing. You're going to shake it together trying to make some of it drop because it's still overflowing. But it's still going to be running over. That's the promises of God. He said, good measure. Press down. you pressing it down because there's so much in there. You're trying to keep it from busting out. Shaking together. you shaking it because there's so much in there that you're trying to make some of it drop down. Run together. Then he said, run it over. Somebody ought to come at the word overflow. 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 That's what God wants to give you. Overflow. Overflow. Can everybody just declare that today? Overflow. That's what he wants to give you. But can I tell you, the only way that God can give you overflow is when you show him that he can trust you with the overflow. Because if you be faithful over the few, he'll make you rule over many. And get this what he say. He say, if you, good morning, my brother Bernal. He say, if you sow sparingly, you're going to reap sparingly. So God is literally telling you, I'm responding to your level of faith. You want me to multiply your seed for sowing? Stop giving me what you give in Burger King. He's literally saying, if you sow sparingly, you're going to reap sparingly. But he said, if you sow bountifully, you'll reap bountifully. We will give the Jordan stole $500 for a pair of tennis shoes. But we'll go to God and say, here, God, just get this. Like Cain, here, just get this and give me greater. And God's like, no, I'm responding to your level of faith. Overflow. That's what God is about to do for us today. This is what I want us to do this morning. People of God, everybody this morning, we're going to get a sacrificial seed. And we're going to release it to God. And we're going to name our seed this morning, Overflow. Some of you, if the Lord leads you to give a hundred, if you, whatever's a sacrifice for you, we're going to name our seed today overflow. And if I be a man of God, watch how God honor his word concerning you. There is no way you can be a sower and walk in land. There's no way that you can take care of God and God not turn around and take care of you. It's a divine exchange. Amen. She said, when I don't pay my tithes, I'll be broke. But when I pay it, God multiply. Amen. That's the truth, Miss um, Dream Nate. Tithing stops the curse. But let, this morning, we're going to get a sacrificial seed, or this afternoon, we're going to get a sacrificial seed of 100, whatever the Lord tell you to give, and we're naming our seed today overflow. The Bible says, whatsoever you sow, you're going to reap it. So as I'm sowing in faith, I'm putting a demand in the spirit realm that overflow increases about to overtake my life. As I'm releasing this sacrifice, I'm about to see the manifestations of God in my family. I'm about to see it in my business, in my home, in my health, in every area. I'm about to see God multiply my seed for sowing. Watch God do it. So this morning, those of you, we're releasing our sacrificial seed of $100. If God tell you to give more, you give what's a sacrifice for you. But watch God respond to your faith. Watch God respond to your faith. This afternoon, we're naming our seed Overflow. 
and God is going to multiply our seeds for sowing. I declare that increase is about to overtake your life. That wherever there's been drought, God is about to send abundance. Wherever there's been lack, that God is about to cause it to overflow. He said, whatsoever you sow, you're going to reap it. Those of you that are sowing, um, Miss Sabrina, the cash app and the um, Venmo is at the top of the page. You can sow through cash app. It's dollar symbol H as in heaven. E-A-V-E-N-S. Impact, I-M-P-A-C-T. Amen, Miss um, Sabrina. You can give through Cash App. It's dollar symbol H as in heaven. E-A-V-E-N-S. Impact, I-M-P-A-C-T. And we're naming our seed this morning, Overflow. Amen. He said, whatsoever you sow. Thank you, Miss Christia. You're going to reap it. So as we're sowing, we declare that Overflow is about to come to our life. And get this. When God released the Overflow to you, Take care of what he sent you to take care. Take care of your, your family, your responsibilities. Stop running to the rescue for everybody else. The increase that God is about to send to your life is not meant for those that, that want to rob God. Do you see the title of the video? Take care of yourself. You got to stop trying to be God to people that don't want to be, that don't want to um, depend on God. Stop running to their rescue. Amen. Stop getting in the way of God. We keep running to the rescue for our family members, for our neighbors. And God is like, listen, I'm sending the increase to you so that I can bless you. Amen, Brunel. And I declare overflow to your life, my brother. God is like, I'm trying to increase you. I'm trying to open doors for you. I'm trying to favor you. But you keep taking everything that I'm giving you and you giving it to the wrong people. People that don't even care about you. Giving up your gifts, your talents, your resources to people that's manipulating you, draining you spiritually, physically, financially, mentally, emotionally. But I declare that this increase that's about to come to your life is for what God is about to do through you. And it's going to be great. It's going to be amazing. Why? Because this time we got wisdom with it. This time we got wisdom with it. Somebody ought to say, I have wisdom. Come on, I want you to declare that today. I have wisdom. I have wisdom. Miss Janet, please name your seed, sweetheart. I'm refunding it back to you. Miss Janet, please name your seed, overflow. Amen. I have wisdom. I want you to declare that today. I have wisdom. So this time, I'm not going to take the harvest and squindle it. This time, I'm not going to take the harvest that God gives me and give it away to people that, that don't care nothing about what God is doing through me. Amen. I got wisdom this time. I admit God. I messed up. I gave it away to the wrong people. I let them manipulate me. I gave it to family. I gave it to associates. Because I felt bad for them. Because I wanted to run to the rescue for people, you know, that I thought that loved me. So God, I admit I did give in your, get in your way. But this time, now that you're giving it to me, God, I got wisdom. I got wisdom. I have wisdom. Amen. I have wisdom. That's right, Rhea. This time we can't give it to the wrong people. Amen. This time we can't be giving it away to people just because they come to us with some sad story. Because God is no respect of a person. The same thing he does for one, he'll do for you. Just like he's opening doors for one person, he'll open doors for you. He wants to bless you. He wants to increase you. But we got to learn to tell people, listen, you got to be faithful to God. This is what I want you to start doing. Whenever people come to you asking you for stuff, I want you to ask them this. Do you tithe? Start asking them, do you tithe? Are you a sower? Or are you just looking for God to increase you so you can focus on your own agenda? Just like you got enough strength and courage and boldness to ask me for money, let me boldly ask you, do you tithe? Do you sow? Do you take care of God's kingdom? So the same way they bold enough to ask you for money, I want you to boldly ask them, do you tithe? From now on, that's right, Trivia. She said, I sure will from now on. I want you to ask them, say, listen, do you tithe? And when they tell you, no, I don't tithe, well, there you go. You can't expect God to be to you what you're not willing to be to him. And because you're not giving God that 10% that belongs to him, you are causing your own life to be cursed. 
Because the Bible say, if you don't tithe, you're cursed with the curse. Father, I thank you for every person that's on this live today. God, we thank you for access. We thank you for the ability, God, that we can come before your throne of grace. Now, God, you said in your word that you give seed to the sower and that you will increase the harvest of our righteousness. So first off, Father, I pray for those that didn't have any seed to sow. And God, I bind the spirit of lack from off of their lives. I pray right now, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you will teach them the importance of putting you first. Father, you said in your word that you give seed to the sower, which means the only way for you to give seed that we must first become sowers. So God, teach them the importance of being a sower and a tither. That they will stop being selfish, only thinking about their own needs and coming to you when they're in need. Lord God, but not thinking about anything else that your will being done in the earth. Now God, I pray for every sower that has sown into this soil today. God, multiply their seeds for someone. I pray that you will increase them, that you will cover them, that you will favor them. Father, that you will open doors in their life that no man can close. God, do it now in the name of Jesus. Give them back even greater than what they released today in the name of Jesus. Bernal, inbox me your phone number. Amen. Bernal, inbox me your phone number. Father, do it for them now in the name of Jesus. And God, I pray, Father, for every tither into this soil that have given their 10% unto you. God, you promised in the book of Malachi chapter 3 that you will open up the windows of heaven. God, you promised that you'll pour out blessings that they have not room enough to receive. So God, I pray, God, that you will open up the windows of heaven over every tither into this soil, that their days of lack are over. God, I bind every spirit of stagnancy, and I speak increase that you will catapult them into their destiny. Father, do it now in the name of Jesus. And God, I pray, God, that in not many days that they'll come back with testimonies of what you're doing. That sicknesses that have been operating their body is being eradicated. Do it now, God. Those that have been going to doctors, giving big money for prescriptions. Father, as they're giving their 10% to you in tithing, I declare that sicknesses are drying up right now. In the name of Jesus. Father, fight for your people today. I declare that peace it's overtaking their marriages, their families, their homes. Do it now, God, in the name of Jesus. And God, we say thank you. Father, we honor you. We adore you. We appreciate you. We reverence you. And we thank you for the overflow, Father. For greater, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So one of the things I like to do whenever we go live, I believe as a pastor that we should lead by example. You know, I shouldn't teach something to you that I don't do. So just like I tell you about sowing, guess what? I'm going to sow. So, Bernal, I saw that you sowed today, today, my brother. I want you to inbox me your phone number. I'm going to call you. I'm going to sow into you this morning. Amen. I'm going to sow into you, my brother, this morning. Hallelujah. One thing about a sower, a sower never lacks. And one of the things God told me, he said, Cornelius, stop sowing into people that don't sow here. He said, you keep giving to so many people that don't even believe in what you're doing. You notice they only come when they're getting a the seed. He says, so into those that sow here, that tithe here, those who are also in ministry doing the will of God. He says, sow back into them. He said, you notice how some of the people you sow into them, you don't hear from them ever again. They come get a seed. Then they come back months later when they need another seed. They don't tithe here. They don't sow here. He says, stop giving to those people. So unto those that believe in the vision that I've given you. So be you, you sow this morning, Brunel. Inbox me your phone number on Instagram. I'm going to call you right now and I'm going to sow into you this morning. Amen, my brother. So send me your phone number now so that I can call you. All right? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. So we're going to sow into you this morning, my brother. And I feel like as a pastor, we should always lead by example. Amen. That's why I tithe in front of y'all. I sow in front of y'all. I said, God, I don't want to be like other pastors. I don't want to be like other leaders. You know how you, you know, they tell you, oh, everybody's, we're going to sow our seed, but they don't sow. Oh, everybody's time to tithe, but they don't tithe. No, I'm not going to be like them. I said, God, I want to be the difference in the earth. I want you to trust me with your resources. 
And this is why whenever it's time to tithe, I tithe right here in front of y'all. I sow in front of y'all. Because I want you to see, pastor, don't teach y'all something that I don't do. I do it right here in front of y'all. So I'm going to sow my seed this morning. Just like we're sowing a seed for $100 this morning, I'm going to sow. Amen. But I, well, of course, I'm, you know, I'm going to sow what the Lord lead me. Amen. All right. I'm calling you now, um, Bernal. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hello. Good morning. How you doing? Good morning. Good morning. Good, good. is good. Yeah, look, you in that NOLA accent. Amen. That New, Orleans, that New Orleans accent. Yeah. So so one of the things I do um, whenever we go live, I, I believe in as a pastor leading by example. So, you know, a lot of times pastors be like, well, I'm going to start off and off with $100. And they put it in the basket and the basket go in the back office with them. So really, you ain't sewing nowhere because you taking it right back with you. So you get to decide where it go. No. So I believe in sewing it to others. So I'm going to sew into you this morning. And um, I'm naming my seat Overflow. Hold on, let's see. Your, your phone number connected to your cash app? Um, not, not this one that you called. Okay, text me your cash app. I could, I could, um, yeah, I could, I could, you want me to DM it to you? you? Yeah, you could text it to this number, or yeah, DM it, yeah, so I can send it now. So I'm naming my seat Overflow. Amen. Yeah, right, I just sent it. All right, um, hold on one second. Just pulling it up. Y'all yeah, bear with bear with me one second. Thank you, Lord. All right, here we go. Prayerfully go through because Cash App will be having a mind of his own. Overflow in Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. All right, it says it's sending. It's sent. Glory to God. It's sent. <laughs> it went through. You got it? I don't know. I ain't getting it yet, but I want to, before I get it, I want to say that I commend you for, um, you know, the work that you're doing. And it was just a coincidence that, well, I wouldn't say it was a coincidence. It was definitely God for mm -hmm. me to come on your live this morning and see that and, um, you know, hear the word because I needed that for sure. To God be the glory, my I brother. Got it. God bless you, man. Yes. So just make sure you give God his 10% of that, you know, and tithe and offering and watch how he continues to multiply you. I'm telling you, it literally causes God to rebuke the devour for our namesake. And there's so many people that are being attacked financially and God wants to stop the attack, but he can't bless something that he's not a part of. He wants to be, we know he's a jealous God. So he wants to be a part of the increase. So you just make sure he get his 10% of tithe and offering. But yeah, you can say a quick prayer over the seed, you know, that God continues to increase it and overflow. You ain't got to say nothing long, but whatever the Lord say. I mean, you can pray now. All right, okay. I will, can I ask you to pray? Yes, okay. Well, Father, I thank you for my brother that's on this live. Now, listen, hold on. If I'm going to pray, you're going to sing us something on here, okay? You hear me? All right. Father, Father, I thank you. I thank you for my brother, Benil. I thank you for his life, his purpose. And God, I just bind every assignment of the enemy that will try to come against his life. Father, I speak peace. This is what I hear for you, my brother. I speak peace to his life. God, I pray right now, Father, that you will begin to restore every broken area of his life. Wherever the locust, the canker worm, the palm worm has been trying to eat up things in his life, we bind that spirit today. And I pray, God, that he shall recover all. Father, I command even greater doors to open. That as he start tithing, giving you the 10% that belongs to you, I pray that you do even greater than American Idol. Father, I pray that his gift will cause nations to know his name. Do it for him now as he puts you first. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. American Idol, don't it, listen, we've all been there, brother, and it's nothing compared to what God can do for you. As you put him first, watch how he catapults your life like never before. In Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah, so here, you can sing us something, my brother. I couldn't seem to fall asleep. There was so much on my mind. I was searching for that peace. But the peace I could not find. So then I knelt down to pray. Pray and help me, please. You said you don't have to cry, cause I'll supply all of your needs as soon as I start worrying. 
worrying how the story ends. I let it go and I let God, let God have its way. That's when things start happening. When I stop looking at back then, I let it go and I let God, let God have his way. Yes, let go and let God. You gotta let go and let God. Amen. Let go and let God. Can everybody comment that? Let go and let God. Everybody, so people say tears are start. Uh, one lady say tears just started falling. To God be the glory. You gotta let go and let God. Amen. Cause it won't always be like this. This for you, brother. The Lord will perfect that concerning you. And soon or later, it's got to turn in your favor. But now, it's turning around for you. It's getting better for you, my brother. You just trust God, all right? Greater is coming. I'm telling you, watch when you start tithing. God is going to shift your life for greater. Every time you get something, 10% immediately goes to God. And he's going to rebuke the devour for your name. Say, open up the windows of heaven. Blow your name in the wind. And people are going to start reaching out to you. Because now he say, I can trust him with the harvest. Watch God do it. Amen. I love you, my brother. Keep my number. If you need me, reach out. Yes. Love you too, my brother. I just love New Orleans too. Yeah. Yeah, I was just there. Yeah, on ministry assignment at the same. You got to let me know when you're back. All right. I will. I'll save your number. All right? All right. All right. All right. God bless you. I'll talk with you later. All right. Listen, people of God, if you were blessed this morning, praise the Lord. I want everybody to come at I am blessed. If you are blessed this morning, if you know that God has been good to you, I want you to declare today, I am blessed. Amen. I am blessed. God is amazing. He's an amazing God. And can I tell you something? God is up to some awesome things for each and every one of us. If we can just put him first. Do you, do you hear me? If you can just put God first, there is no lack to those that put God first. Love you, Bishop Cedric, the drama. Bishop Cedric the drummer, amen. Boy, Cedric talked like he is called to be in the pulpit preaching the word of God. You hear me? Amen. Corey says, I'm tremendously blessed. Amen. Thank you. Joy says, heaven's impact is fertile soil. Thank you. Linda says, I'm blessed. To God be the glory. Thank you, BJ. Thank you. Covenant says, I'm blessed. Listen, people of God, this is the time that everybody gets to play a part. It's offering time. This is the time. One thing I am a firm believer of is never go before God without offering something. If you know that God has been good to you, listen, the least we can say is thank you by, by demonstration, not just saying, Lord, I thank you. But our offering is the way that we say thank you. God, I thank you for everything. Thank you for life, for health, for breath for, in my body, for the ability to use my limbs. So this morning, we're going to get an offering, whatever you feel God is worthy of. I'm not going to tell you what to give to God. But when you give your offering this morning, name your offering, I am blessed. Amen. Name your offering, I am blessed. Amen. We're going to name our offering this morning. I am blessed. We're declaring that the blessings of the Lord will continue to overtake my life, that God will continue to open doors for me. Why? Because I don't forget about him. Amen. One of the most important parts of the service is offering time. This is the time that you get what you need from God. See, people think just by talking, oh, oh, Lord, do this, Lord, do that. God ain't no genie in the bottle. But whenever you're giving, you make things shift in the spirit realm for you immediately. And one of the most powerful parts of the service, everybody runs from it. Here come offering everybody, uh-oh, Lord, let me go. Or they start hiding their purse. See, they go asking for money. If you knew what giving to God does for you in the spirit realm, you never rob him. You never not want to give to God. Because every time you give to him, it's a divine exchange. And one thing about God, God will never allow you to outgive him. So this morning, we're going to get our offering, whatever you feel God is worthy of, whatever you're able to offer to God, and we're going to name our offering, I am blessed. Amen. Those of you that are giving your offering, you can give through Cash App. It's dollar symbol H as in heaven, E-A-V-E-N-S. Impact, I-M-P-A-C-T. It's the one with the picture that says, Happy Birthday, Cornelius. But make sure that when you give your offering, that, um, you know, you look at the bottom of Cash App, you'll see that it says, Heavens with one S, then Impact. If it says anything different, those are scammers, all right? So always look at the cash tag. Heavens with one S, then Impact, all right? And for those of you that want to get through Venmo, 
Thank you, Joyce, for coming in. The Venmo is at Pastor C. Edwards. That's at P-A-S-T-O-R. I love you too, Devante. Um, it's at Pastor C. Edwards on um, Venmo. That's at P-A-S-T-O-R-C-E-D-W-A-R-D-S. All right, for those of you that want to give through um, Zale, the Zale is under my name, Cornelius. But the email address for the Zale is anointedsanger at gmail.com. That's A as in Apple, N as in Nancy, O-I-N, T as in Terrell, E-D-S-I-N-G-E-R at gmail.com. Make sure that you name your offering, I am blessed. Amen. Thank you, Miss Denise, for the offering. I decree and I declare the blessing of the Lord upon your life. Thank you to my mom. My, oh, my mom on here. Thank you, mom, for your offering. I decree and I declare the blessing of the Lord upon your life, that God will continue to increase you both, that he will multiply you even the more in Jesus' name. So make sure that you're naming your offering, I am blessed. Thank you, Bernal. I decree and I declare the blessing of the Lord upon your life, my brother, that God will continue to multiply you, cover you, and increase you for his glory in Jesus' name. So make sure that you guys are naming your offering, I am blessed. Amen. For those of you that want to give your offering through um, PayPal, the PayPal is paypal.me forward slash heavens impact. That's paypal.me forward slash H E A V E N S impact I M P A C T. Um, so if you're giving through PayPal, it's paypal.me forward slash H E A V E N S impact I M P A C T. And for those of you that want to use your bank debit or credit card, you can give online at www dot cornelius edwards dot com so um those of you that are giving online you can give by going to the website and remember i don't get paid for ministry we don't listen so i like to make sure i let you guys know this is how you see those videos of us feeding the homeless blessing people we are a ministry we are not a non-profit we are not 501c3 we are jc3 this ministry is ran by jesus christ father son and the holy ghost amen that's why it's not 501c3 it's jc3 it's ran by jesus christ Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. That's what it's ran by, all right? Those, the three in one, you know, so that's what it's ran by. So this is why God keeps blessing his ministry because it's not controlled by the government. This is why God keeps blessing his ministry because a lot of you, you, you got ministries, but it's controlled by the system and God wants to be in control. So you're wondering, why God not blessing the ministry? Why such an attack? Why I can't get this? Why doors are opening? Because it's controlled by the system and God wants to be over it. God wants to decide who he blesses. God don't want us making, God don't want us giving the people, telling them, you got to fill out paperwork showing that I gave this to you. What you do in secret, I open to reward you. Perhaps that family don't want nobody to know that you paid their rent. Everything ain't for everybody to know. The Bible said, what you do in secret, I openly reward you. So here it is. If you're giving to God in secret, but you're asking the government to give you a tax write-off for what you gave to God, it's no longer a secret, and now it's become a loan. We don't loan to God. The Bible said that God loves a cheerful giver. So when we give to God, we cheerfully, freely give. And as we freely and cheerfully give to him, he increases us. He covers us. He strengthens us. He extends our years of life. He opens doors. He hides us from the darts of the enemy divine exchange. This is not a, a 501 and all that foolishness. Well, nothing against those who got it. I'm sorry, but this is not that. This is real ministry, kingdom assignment. This is what we do here. So we use, we don't, we don't give to God for a write-off. We freely give to God and he writes off witchcraft. He fights for us. He rebukes the devour for us. We don't look for the system to reward us for what we gave to God. God rewards those who are faithful to him. Amen. And I say that to say this, a lot of you guys that do have ministries that's being controlled by the system, you're wondering why God isn't blessing it because God can't bless something that he's not over. If he's not over it, he's like, you got the system controlling it, so I can't tell you where to give to. Then you got to make everybody fill out paperwork every time you give. Do you know how annoying that would be? If every time we bless somebody, just like we sold it to, you know, Brother Purnell, hey, I need you to feel like a write-off showing that I gave you this amount of money. I need you. That would be annoying. First of all, it'll make me not even want the blessing. I'll be like, that's okay. I'm good. You can have it. I wouldn't even want it. If I got to fill out paperwork and do all that just for you to help me and it's supposed to be unto God, how is it unto God if I got to fill out paperwork for you to bless me? Uh -uh, we're JC3. It's ran by Jesus Christ, Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. That's who this ministry. Those are the three that run this. The three in one, Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. 
Amen. And this is why he fights for your business. This is why he's increasing you because you're keeping his will going in the earth. Amen. Divine exchange. Thank you so much. Um, divine exchange. And there's no way that you can give to God and God not give right back to you even greater. Amen. Um, but I believe God. Amen. So um, this. Um, so I'm going to pray over the offering. Amen. JC3. That's right, Miss Teresa. JC3. That's what we are. Not 501c3. JC3. It's ran by God, Jesus Christ, the Father, Son, the Holy Ghost. That's who it's ran by. And this is why he tells us who to bless, who to give to, where to go. And as we do what he say, he keep increasing his, his ministry. Amen. Um, Alexandria, you say you sent through Venmo. Yes, ma'am. There's only one Venmo, uh, Miss Alexandria. So, yeah, you'll know that you sent to the right one. It's at Pastor C. Edwards. Amen. Miss um, Alexandria. Yes, you sent to the right one, Miss Wilts. Alexandria Wilts. Amen. And I declare increase upon your seed in Jesus name that God will multiply. Father, I thank you for every person that have given an offering today. God, you said into your word, give and it shall be given. So, Father, even as they gave to keep your kingdom going in the earth, to keep your word being preached before you return, because the world is not going to support the kingdom of God. So you're dependent on us as believers to keep your kingdom going in the earth. Father, I pray that you will multiply them even greater. I pray, God, that you will cause increase to overtake their lives like never before. I pray, God, that wherever they're hurting, you bring healing. Wherever they feel low, that you cause them to rise higher in those areas. And, Father, I pray that everything that they've lost over the years be restored. Give them back their peace. Give them back their joy. Father, give them back their stamina, their drive to do the will of God. I pray right now, Father, that you give them back their purpose. Some of them that have thrown in the towel and given up on the assignment that you called them to do. Father, I pray that you give them back that drive to do the will of God. And Father, we say thank you. We honor you. We adore you. We appreciate you. We reverence you. There is no one like you. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, I declare that today is an amazing day. Today is a day of favor, increase, abundance, divine connections, that you're placing us at the right places at the right time. And God, we say thank you. Thank you in advance for what you're about to do. Father, we'll forever give you glory. We'll forever give you honor. And we'll forever give you all of the praises and the powerful matches, undefeated name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we pray. Amen. Everybody say amen. Amen. Thank you guys so much. For taking time to come join us today. Hallelujah. Uh, for taking time to join. I'm trying to think. Uh, thank you so much for taking time to come join us today. God is so amazing. And he's up to some amazing things for his people. The Bible say no good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. Say he's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. There is no way that you can seek God. Do the will of God. Give God what belongs to him. And he not fight for you. There are good things that come to those that put God first. But all we got to do is put God first and watch how he continues to open up windows that open up doors and windows that no man can close and cause favor to overtake your life, your businesses. But the key is that we got to keep putting God first. I love you too, Miss Christina. Listen, people of God, I love you guys. I will see you guys, Lord willingly, um, Sunday. But listen, make sure that you are following all social media platforms. So if you're not, make sure that you're following YouTube, which is Pastor Cornelius Edwards. Make sure that you're following, what is this thing called, Lord? Facebook, which is Heaven's Impact. Um, um, the correct Facebook page is the one I think has 40,000 followers um, or something like that. Because there's a bunch of scammers creating fake pages of me on Facebook. So, and the correct, um, and make sure you follow Instagram. The Instagram is pastor underscore CE. For those of you that are following on Instagram, and if you're following on TikTok, um, the TikTok is Pastor C. Edwards. They got a bunch of fake pages of me on TikTok as well. So the correct TikTok is the one that has 166.8 thousand followers. So the one that has 166.8 thousand followers is the correct TikTok page, all right? Because there is so many fake pages of me and they keep inboxing people telling people to send money to a charity all this craziness that's not me all right please 
Don't even entertain their foolishness. But listen, y'all, I love you. I will see you. Oh, she say Sabbath tomorrow. Yes, Sabbath is tomorrow. I will see you guys, Lord willingly, Sunday, unless the Lord say otherwise. I'll see you guys, Lord willingly. All right, Miss Charlene Morgan. I'll see you guys, um, Lord willingly, Sunday. But yes, Sabbath is tomorrow. So we'll see what the Lord say. Lord willingly, I'll see you guys tomorrow. All right, Miss Cheryl. We know that um, Sabbath... The Sabbath is holy. You know, it's a holy day unto the Lord. Now y'all hitting the hearts. Lord, y'all something else. I say, Lord willingly, I'll see y'all tomorrow. Y'all start hitting the hearts on Facebook. Lord, so Lord willingly, I will see you guys tomorrow for the Sabbath. Um, tomorrow, Lord willingly, I'll see you guys. Um, um, Miss Ellery, you say, what's the Zale address? The Zale, can somebody respond to Miss Ellery? The Zale email address is anointedsanger at gmail.com. That's A as in Apple, N as in Nancy, O-I-N-T as in Terrell, E-D-S-I-N-G-E-R at gmail.com. So the um the email address for the Zale is anointed sanger at gmail.com to Miss Ellarine. Uh, Miss Ellarine on Facebook. Can somebody please respond back to her with the email address on Facebook for the Zale? It's anointed sanger at gmail.com. All right. Um, so if you're sending your tithe and offering, make sure that you name it tithe and offering. If you're sowing a seed today, we're naming our sacrificial seed of 100 or whatever the Lord tell you to give. We're naming our seed today overflow. Amen. So if you're sowing your $100 sacrificial seed, name it overflow. And we're declaring that overflow is about to overtake our life. Why? Because the Bible says whatsoever you sow, you're going to reap it. I love you too, Trivia. Um, it says whatsoever you sow, that shall you reap. So we're putting a demand in the spirit realm and we're going to reap overflow in Jesus name. All right. Um, so Ellerine. Again, that is, um, let me see if I can send it to you from this phone. Uh, thank you, Lord. Um, to Miss Ellerine. Thank you, Lord. Um, do you have it? Do you have the email, Miss Ellerine? Let me know if you have it um, before I um, come over on Facebook. Look, y'all. Look at all these fake pages of me. It's just so many. Look at all these fake pages of me. All these fake pages of Cornelius on Facebook. So the correct Facebook page on, um, um, hi, Pastor, is Rachel. Um, amen. So listen, um, it's a whole bunch of fake pages of me, y'all. It's ridiculous. And they, and they named Pastor Cornelius. First of all, I don't have Pastor on my name on Facebook. So anybody with a page that say Pastor Cornelius, that's not me. Immediately, you know that's not me. Amen. Um, heaven's impact. All right. So let me, um, you say you don't have it, Ellerine. I'm going to send it to you now. All right. So, Miss Ellerine, you said, no, you don't have it. All right. Here's the email address. AnointedSinger at gmail.com. A-N-O-I-N-T-E-D-S-I-N-G-E-R at gmail.com. So, I'm responding to you right now on Facebook. All right. So, now you got it. And I'm going to pin the comment so I know you got it. Um, all right. Um, I like the sound. I like the sound of your... What? All right, so Miss Ellerine, that's the Zell right there. All right? Amen. The Zell is. All right, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Can everybody tell them, say, Lord, I love you? Can everybody come in, Lord, I love you? No, um, please, no email in the church, um, Niger. If you want to send a message, you can send it online or you can go on the website, www.corneliusedwards.com. Yeah, you can do it through there, the website. Amen. But no emails to this email address. This email address is for Zale. All right. That's the Zale. Uh, um, says you live in. Yeah, the profile is so many fake profiles of me. So, Miss Ellerine, do you have it now? Because I just pinned it and I, I responded back to you and pinned it. All right. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Lord, I love you. Can everybody tell them, say, God, you're awesome. Tell them, say, God, you're awesome. You're awesome, God. And there is no one like you. No one like you. Thank you, Lord. Father, we honor you. We honor you, Jesus. We honor you, Jesus. We honor you, God. There is no one like you. 
There is no one like you. We honor you. Come on, can you tell God that this morning? Say, God, I honor you. I honor you. Come on, tell him, say, God, I honor you. I honor you. Come on, only if you really mean it. If you really mean it, tell him, say, God, I honor you. I honor you. Father, I honor you. You're worthy, Jesus. You are worthy, Jesus. Nobody like you, God. Amen. We honor you, God. We honor you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So that's it right there, Miss um, Ellerine. Um, that's the Zell right there that I just put on the screen. I usually don't like the pen, the information on the screen. That's why I don't keep the Zell and all that pen. I un um, when people post it, I don't pin it because I want people to learn the word. And a lot of times when people see Cash App and Zell pin at the bottom of the screen, first thing they think, oh, it's about the money. Let me get away. And then they end up missing. It's not about the money. It's about our obedience. And God can't give you something that he can't trust you with. So everybody wants the blessing, the favor, the increase of God. But they run when God acts of their, their obedience. So when you're teaching them what works, they run. So I, I don't like for the cash app and stuff to be pinned on the stream because I like for people to learn what works. If you be faithful to God, God will be faithful to you. Amen. All right. He'll be faithful to you. Thank you, Lord. Yes, he will. Amen. He will be faithful to you. Thank you, Father. All right. Listen, people, I love you guys so much. I will see you guys, Lord willingly. Um, Lord willingly, tomorrow for the Sabbath. Um, and if not tomorrow, I'll see you guys Sunday. All right. I'll see you guys Sunday, Lord willingly, um, Sunday morning. All right. I love you guys. I will see you guys, Lord willingly, tomorrow or Sunday. Um, as the Lord allows. If you want me to come on tomorrow, pray for me. Amen. Lord, give pastor strength. You know, um, you know, tell him to tell God to have me come on. Amen. And I believe God will do it. I believe he will. You tell God to give me strength, you know, give me a fresh rain of word and tell him, say, Lord, have pastor come on. I believe God will do it. I love you too, Miss Shirley. Amen. Love you guys. As always, I love you for real. Have an amazing day. Yeah. Love you guys. See you guys, Lord willingly, um, tomorrow for the Sabbath or Sunday. All right. God bless you. Father, you're worthy. You're worthy. And there is no one like you. Nobody like you, Jesus. Nobody like you, Jesus. Give you glory.